Well, happy Wednesday morning to you, everyone, and welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. I want to remind you, Preterist Pilgrim Weekend, July 14th through the 16th, 2016, the fallacy of amillennialism. Look, I was raised as a fifth generation member of the amillennial view of eschatology and theology. I I discovered through my own research that amillennialism is not biblical eschatology. And so this year, we will be addressing this issue. Every man that will be speaking was raised in, indoctrinated in, believed in the view of amillennialism, but through their own study came to realize it is not the correct view of eschatology. They will be sharing their journey with you, with all of us, and why and how they come to believe in covenant eschatology. This, this is going to be great. In addition to those speeches, be a two-day formal debate between Dr. David Hester of Faulkner University of Montgomery, Alabama, and myself. So come be a part of this. It promises to be absolutely fantastic, and it will be of a tremendous benefit to you. If you were raised believing in the all-millennial view of eschatology, this seminar would challenge you kindly and lovingly, but it will challenge you in your views. Okay. Well, <clears throat> we're looking at the nature of the kingdom in relationship to this marvelous word and motif, Zion. The Lord said in Isaiah chapter 2, 2 through 4, that he would establish the messianic kingdom, the messianic temple, and the new covenant. That's all found in that tightly packed couple of verses there. And that would be in Zion. And it would be in the last days. And it would be fully consummated at the day of the Lord of verses 9 through 11 and verses 19 to 21. Now, I want you to catch the power of this. Here we have the prediction of the establishment of Zion, the kingdom of God. The Messianic temple would be there, as we've already noted. And the climax of this last day's period is the coming of the great day of the Lord's wrath. When he arises to shake the earth mightily, says verses 19 to 21. Well, is that an end of time event in which the earth will be restored? Is that an end of the Christian age event when Jesus will come out of heaven in a physical body <coughs> and time will end in a moment in a twinkling of an eye? Is that what this is? Well, according to Isaiah chapter 2, this day of the Lord that comes at the climax of the last days and the establishment, full establishment in power and glory of the kingdom, it would be a time. Now remember, we're talking. Here's the here's the climax. Here's the consummation. Here, <coughs> pardon me. Here's the full blown glory of the establishment of the everlasting kingdom. At the day of the Lord, when He arises to shake the earth mightily. So again, the question is: Is this an end of time event? Well, this day of the Lord would be <clears throat> when men could run to the mountains, hide in the caves, and say to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the great day of the Lord, from the power of the Lord and the terror of His coming. What? Now look, we are told by all millennialists and post-millennialists, well, yeah, the kingdom has been established, uh, yeah, we're, pardon me, we're, we're sort of in the kingdom right now, but we're, we're waiting for the coming of the Lord to consummate the kingdom. That's when Jesus comes at the end of time and rules and reigns on earth. There's a problem here. 
this day of the Lord is a time, did you catch it? Is a time when men could run to the mountains. They could hide in the caves. They could fall to the rock or call to the rocks. Fall on us and hide us. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If the day of the Lord is an earth-burning, time-ending event that is over, boom, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, how would anybody have time to run to the mountains? How much good would it do them, and would they have time to hide in the caves? Look, this day of the Lord... and, and by the way, this language of running to the mountains, hiding in the caves, is right straight out of Israel's history at times when Israel was invaded by her enemies, and what would she do? She would run to the mountains and hide in the rocks and the caves. This is, this is language of warfare. It is not end of time language. But this language of Isaiah 2, remember, it is, a, it is the time of the establishment of the kingdom at the day of the Lord. But this day of the Lord, to reiterate, is when men could run to the mountains. Men won't have time in the traditional view of eschatology of the day of the Lord that is over in a moment and in a twinkling of an eye, they won't have time to run to the mountains and hide in the, in the caves. So you see, Isaiah chapter 2 tells us about the establishment of the kingdom in the last days, fully established at the day of the Lord, completely refutes the idea of a future physical coming of the Lord at any so-called end of time. It just doesn't work. Well, thanks for joining me for this morning's Morning Musings. Don't forget, if you would, do yourself a favor. Go to my website, eschatology.org or bibleprophecy.com. Order my brand new book, The Resurrection of Daniel, chapter 12, verse 2, Future or Fulfilled. You will find here an incredible discussion of the nature of the kingdom, the nature of the resurrection. This book is a total refutation of all futurist views of the kingdom being an earthly, physical kingdom. This book will challenge your heart. It will help you to understand the true nature of the kingdom. Get yourself a copy of it today. And we'll see you on the flip side.